My name is Iqbal Kadir. I am the founder of the Legatum Center at MIT, which helps MIT students uh, establish um, ventures in developing countries, usually technology-based. I came to America 40 years ago now, and a country very rich in innovations. But I, I happen to be coming from Bangladesh, which is uh, not so rich in innovations these days. I was very lucky to come from that country because it represents the context, a bigger part of the global context, better than the United States or Canada. I, I believe in a two-way street. The innovations can enrich the, the context, and the context, of course, fosters innovations. The innovations live in the first world, and the large markets are out in the third world. They're not necessarily coming together. A general problem worldwide. And I thought I could do something about it because I came to a rich country, and I came from a country that is innovation poor. People have headaches. If they get an aspirin, they relieve their headache. So the, you might see social problems because their quote-unquote problems are not getting solved. And so if you find a means, the innovations are kind of the means to solve a specific problem, then that problem goes away. If I have a headache and an aspirin is low cost enough, it does take care of my headache, I am going to take it. But if you bring me a very complex medicine that, <laughs> that is not actually taking care of my headache, then of course I will shun it. I will say no need. Or I cannot afford it. Okay. So it has to be both affordable and, um, and also effective. And you have to identify the kind of headache people have. So if we have, uh, if a society needs communication, we cannot necessarily bring transportation. This is my point. And then people would not say, say well, this is not relevant to us. People may say, oh, there are a lot of quote-unquote low-income people who cannot afford this service that costs, let's say, a dollar. Okay? Uh, because we look at their current income and say, one dollar is too much for them. But if the headache that it is removing allows me to advance five times more or three times more, then I'm perfectly happy to pay for it. So for instance, if um, you tell me, oh, one bottle of water is um, five rupees, and many people cannot afford that. But however, if the clean water saves me a whole days of work, then, uh, if, and I make 100 rupees during that day, five rupees is fine. So what I'm trying to say, we need to see the affordability with what it is giving me. There is no such thing as something is affordable or not affordable on its own. If it allows you to earn money because you connect with your friends and families or workers, whatever, better, and you save time, then you will be able to pay for that service. So to see in the, the price of the service as a standalone thing to overcome, I think is fundamentally flawed. One of the forces that can make it affordable if it's addressing a large market. And uh, the low-income countries where supposedly there are social problems, uh, they represent large markets. Let's go back. Uh, what kind of the Stone Age of, of computing technologies? But even back in 1982, the computer was recognized as a as the man of the year. Of course, they called it machine of the year. But that's because it was having a major impact on the context in our lives. While innovations are good to take in low-income countries. The digital technologies is kind of a big river through many other innovations can come through. It's like St. Lawrence River, very wide river. Lots of possibilities can come through it. But 2002, already a smartphone came along, and people said computers will be in this way, in the form of a phone. Okay. 
And if you go forward, in 2005, it was beginning to rec be recognized that the real digital divide, real difference between the first world and the third world in terms of computing will be in the form of the phone. I established something called Grameen Phone in Bangladesh and um, it's, it's now a very large mobile phone company. Bangladesh is five, six times bigger than Canada in terms of number of people. So if there is a technology that empowers 50, 60, 70 million people, there is a bigger market. Even if people are paying very little for it, it can it still add up. So take the case of uh, Grameen Phone. That has close to 60 million subscribers. So even if the per subscriber is paying only $3 a month, that's close to $200 million per month. So it adds up to $2 billion a year. Well, that's not to sneeze at in any country. Even though I have certain social concern, I still believe in business, is that it allows uh, things to hang together, okay? Because the economic interest of the company forces it to address the needs on the ground, okay? And people vote uh, with their money, whether they're happy with the service or not. I feel underneath many social problems are economic problems. Um, so if I stand on a stronger island or I'm stronger on my feet, then I can tackle other problems better. So innovations makes the person stronger. Uh, and I think then he or she is more capable of dealing with the issues he or she faces.